Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to perform practical of sampling theorem uh, on MATLAB. This window is a home window of MATLAB software. And for your information, I just tell you that uh, this is student version. We have downloaded from MathWork. So let's start with today's practical. Uh, basically, before coming on the code, I'll tell you basic concept of sampling. In sampling, We have a signal which consists of several frequencies F1, F2, F3, F4. Out of that, this is the maximum frequency. So we can divide this signal into n number of samples where sampling frequency should be greater than or equal to twice of fm twice of fm so this is called as sampling and this equation is called as nyquist rate and we have nyquist interval which is given by ts which is equal to 1 by fs. So, we are going to take an original signal. We are going to mix that with the pulse. And later on, this sampled signal will be formed. And later on, we are going to generate or regenerate the original signal from there. So let's do this practical. You can see the code over here. Uh, basically, we have this uh, cos wave, which is given by x1 is equal to cos of 2 pi f t1. This is our modulating signal or original signal, we can say. So we have these two unknown. One is f, another one is t1. So we have to assign value to this values to this. So F is, we have uh, assigned as 13 E3, that is 30 into 10 to power 3 hertz. Now Fs is sampling frequency, which is twice of F. What is Ts? Ts is 1 by Fs, that is sampling rate, sampling interval. Now we have declared F. Now we have to assign value to T1. So T1 we have taken from 0 to pi by f with an interval of 1 e minus 7 means it will take the value of t1 from 0 to 5 by f and between two numbers the difference will be of 1 e raised to power e minus 7 that means the difference between two number will be 1 into 10 raised to power minus 7. Now we are going to plot three figures now three plots are there so So subplot 3, 1, 1, that means it is going to plot our modulating signal on first part of the figure window. Our figure window will be getting divided into three rows and one column and sine wave, a cos wave, which is our modulating signal will be plotted in the first part. So to plot that, we have to give the command plot t1 comma x1. Now x level on x axis, it is time domain. On the y axis, it is amplitude and the title is message signal. Now we are going to plot with the second graph that is on the second part of the figure window. So it is again the message signal only, but we have given hold on command. What is the hold on command? 
hold on means we are going to mix our uh, pulse with that so that sample signal will be formed so it is only possible when we are going to give the hold on in our subsequent uh, after uh, next i'm going to show you if i'll going to put the comment over here if i'm not going to write this hold on then what will happen then t2 is 0 to f by uh, 5 by f and uh, between uh, 0 to 5 by f the uh, the numbers it will take will have the difference of ts now our second signal is x2 which is cos of 2 pi f t2 so what is t2 So T2, uh, X2 is cos of 2 pi F T2. So T2 is 0 to F, 5 by F. And F is, we have already declared that is 30 E3. Now we are going to put subplot 3 comma 1 comma 2. Now we are going to put the steam. So steam means it will divide that into Compulses T2 comma X2, X level time, Y level amplitude, and title is sample. See, I'll show you the output, then only we can understand what it is. So we'll run, let's run this program. It will take some time. Let's see the output. You can see over here. This first wing, uh, figure is message signal. So, This is that our signal and subplot 3 comma 1 comma 1 plot T1 X1. Now next is uh, subplot 3 comma 1 comma 2 to plot T1 X1. It is steam T2 comma X2. We have this stream. In this way. Now there it is X level, there it is Y level, and there it is title. So this is our sample signal. Why I have given this hold on because this x2 sorry uh, this subplot our this signal which is our original signal should get mixed up with the steam if i won't give the hold on then it won't get mixed up now next is For I, 1 is to length T1. For J, 1 is to length X2. XRI is equal to XRI plus X2J shrink 2F FS T1 I minus J. And a subplot 3, comma 1, comma 3. Plot T1 XR. X level time, Y level amplitude, original is, title is original signal. So legend XT, X and T, X of RTS. 
so now first of all we will try to understand till this point now we are going with third window uh, third part which is in a third plot of the our figure window here our original signal get retrieved so how it is coming so what it has done is it has generated the zeros for the length of t1 so whatever the value of t1 we have So here it is T1, this one. So for each value of T1 here, XR value will be getting generated. Now we have taken a loop, that is we have taken a variable I, which is from one to length T1. So whatever the length of T1 is there, suppose for T1 there is uh, 200 values or say 100 values. So for one to 100, then again for J1 to length of X, X2. So for X2, it will generate this signal, which is XRI is equal to XRJ. And the across sync of two FS, T1 i minus j i minus j. So with that, it is going to generate this kind of signal. Means what is the use of this? Use is j will be from 1 to length of x2. So what is the length of x2? x2 has been up to this point, sorry, up to this point. So the signal is up to this. And XR is zero length T1. So for that, for every sample, it is going to generate this signal. That is why it is uh, I is one to length of T1. XR I is equal to XR I plus X2J shrink to fs t1 i minus j so this is shrink function so here i'll again explain you the figure window so the first figure is message signal second figure is sample signal and third figure is the original signal So this is the practical of sampling theorem. I hope you have understood it. Thank you.